In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys seven really amazing command line tools that can be incredibly helpful when working on the terminal. Now I'm gonna be showing all of these on Mac OS, but everything I'm gonna be showing you will also apply if you're working on a Linux machine. I'm also gonna be using Homebrew to install all of the tools. So if you're on a Mac, make sure that you have this installed. I'll have instructions on how to do this along with everything else I'm gonna be showing you in the blog post linked in the description. Now the first tool I'm gonna be showing you is called FCF. This is a really fast and very useful useful fuzzy finder for the command line. I'm gonna go ahead and install it by doing brew install fcf and I'm using ZSH. So I'm gonna open up the config file with my editor of choice. I like to use NeoVim. You can use whichever text editor you prefer to do this. I'm gonna do nvim tilde slash dot CSHRC. I'm gonna go to the bottom of this file. And the first thing we need to do is add the following. This will set up the FCF key bindings and fuzzy completion. I'm gonna save this and exit NeoVim. And then I'm gonna reload the configuration like so. Now I can start using FCF. There's a lot of different things you can do, but one of the primary use cases is to look for files. I've moved over to a different directory here. Now the first thing I can do is to run FCF. That'll open up the fuzzy finder. And then you can just start typing to look for a specific file like this. I'm gonna exit with control C. Instead of doing this, you'll probably use one of the shortcuts. For example, let's say I wanna open a file with NeoVim. I can do NVim and then I can follow that with control T and that will look for files and directories under the directory I'm currently in. Let's say I want to open client.ts. I can press enter and then press enter to open it with NeoVim. Control T will allow you to look for directories as well as files. And you can use this with a bunch of different commands. Let's say I wanna do it with a VS code. I could do code, control T and look for client.ts and press enter and enter. And there you go, now it's open in VS code. Now another really convenient way of doing this is by doing something like CD and you can follow this with two stars and press tab and that'll automatically open up FZF and it'll only show directories and the results. Now I haven't mentioned how to go through the results. You can use control J and K, control N and control P or the down and up arrows. Now let's say I wanna to go to Supabase, I can just type out something like SUP and press enter and enter and I'm in. You can also use the double star pattern with other commands. Let's say you wanna open up a file with your editor, I can do nvim star star tab and then look for what I want to open. Or with VS Code for example, config.toml and then you open it up. Now you can also do this with SSH. This will allow you to look for recently used IP addresses and host names. And you can also use this with the kill command to kill a specific process. You use dash nine to kill the process and you can use star star tab. Let's say for example, I wanna close Notion, which I currently have open, and then I can press enter and it'll replace it with the process ID. So you can go ahead and kill it. Now, when you're using MZF, I'm gonna look for Notion again. You can use the tab key to select more than one result as well as shift tab to deselect. And if you press enter, it'll include both of the results. You can also use FZF to work with environment variables. You can do unset star star tab and you can look through environment variables here as well as with export and aliases. So you can do unalias to remove an alias, do star star tab and then look for the alias. Finally, you can use control R to look through the history. So I could look for one of these commands and select it and then I can run it. If I start typing out a command, then the filtering will start from there, which is also really useful. Now how it works by default is really, really helpful. I'm gonna add some extra configurations to make it even nicer. What I'm gonna do is install FD. This will replace the find command, which is what FCF uses by default to look for files. Let's go ahead and install that. Now I can open up the ZSHRC file like so then go to the bottom and add the following. First, we're changing the default command that is used to look for files and directories. We're using FD. We wanna show hidden files, strip the current working directory, and we do wanna exclude .git directories. FD by default will ignore any files and directories that are ignored with a .git ignore file, which is really nice because we typically wanna ignore these files when we're searching for things. 
Now the control T keybind will use the default command. Now this function here is for the star star completion when looking for files and directories. This is very similar to the default command. And this one here is for the star star tab functionality, but when looking for directories, like when you're doing CD. I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna exit NeoVim. And the last thing I'm gonna do is to add a script that makes it really easy to work with Git along with FCF. I'm gonna CD into my home folder and I'm gonna do Git clone and the following directory. It's called fzf-git.sh. And what we wanna do now is open up the zshrc file, go to the bottom. I'm gonna add source tilde slash fcf dash git dot sh and inside it has this script file that we want to source. Save this, exit NeoVim and now I can reload the configuration like so. I'm gonna move back to my repository and now we have a bunch of different keybinds. We can hold down control and then do gh and that will show different git hashes. Let's say you want to do a diff, you could do git diff and then hold down control and then press gh. Select one of these and press enter and enter and there you go. Let's say you want to check out a branch, you can do git checkout, press down control and then do gb. You can take a look at the FCF git repository to see a list of all of the available key maps. Now the next command line tool is called bat. We're going to install it with homebrew by doing brew install bat. Bat is a better version of cat, which is used to display the content of a file in the terminal. But with bat, you have syntax highlighting. Now that we've installed it, I can do something like bat and let's use FZF to look for a file. I'm gonna do star star tab and look for client and press enter and enter again. And you'll see that the output is really nice with syntax highlighting. If I do up arrow and change this with cat, it's just much less readable. Now bat has a bunch of different themes. You can use the following command to see an example of all of the different themes. You just have to replace this with a path to an actual file. I'm gonna use dot slash db slash client dot ts. This command requires you to have FCF installed. Now you can use control J and K or the up and down arrows to look through these different themes. If you find a theme on GitHub that isn't one of the built-in themes, the first time you're gonna install a new theme, you want to run the following command to create the directory where all of the themes should go. And then you can move into this directory with this following command. You'll see that it's .config slash bat slash themes. Then you'll want to add the theme you found online to this directory. I'm gonna be installing a theme called Tokyo Night like so. I'm using curl to do this. You'll see here that this is the night variation of the Tokyo Night theme and the file extension should be .tm theme. From what I understand, this theme in particular is normally compatible with the Sublime Text Editor. Now you'll see that the theme is now in this directory. The final thing you'll have to do in order to use it is to do bat cache dash dash build. Now I'm gonna move back to where I was at with cd and dash. And I'm gonna rerun the command we used earlier to see the different themes and I can look for Tokyo Night with FZF and see an example of how it looks like. You'll see that the name is Tokyo Night underscore night. I'm gonna close this with control C. To use it as a default for bat, we can open up the ZSHRC file like so, go to the bottom and then add the following to set the bat theme variable to Tokyo Night underscore night. Let's save this, close NeoVim, and I'm going to source the CSHRC file, and then let's use bat, and then star star tab, and look for db slash client, and press enter. And now the output will use the Tokyo Night theme. Another really useful tool that goes hand in hand with bat is delta, which we can use to create better looking diffs. I'm gonna install it by doing brew install git dash delta. And then to use delta with git for when you're doing a git diff, you can do nvim tilde slash dot git config to open up your git configuration file. And then you can add the following. This will set up delta. I'm gonna save and quit. And now I can do git diff and I can use my shortcut control gh. And let's just pick one of these hashes and press enter and enter again. And you'll see that the diff looks a lot better. And what's really cool as well is that Delta will use the bat theme that you're using to show the code. 
If you want to do side by side this, you can open up your git config and then add here under delta side by side is equal to true. And then you can do git diff and control gh. And let's go ahead and choose two of them. Let's do tab and tab and press enter and enter again. And the diff now will be side by side. Now I also wanna show you guys how to integrate that with FZF previews. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you the next really nice CLI tool. I'm going to install it like so. It's called EZA, which is basically a better LS. And now you can use EZA to list the files within a directory. EZA has a lot of different options to make things look a lot better than LS. Just to give you an example, you can do something like EZA dash dash color equals always to show with colors. And then we can use long to show a lot more information and enable get information as well. Let's say you want to remove some of these, you can use EZA color always long. I want to show git. I don't want the file size. I do want the icons. So this is always, I don't want the time, the user, or the permissions. You can also use EZA to list files in tree format. You can do EZA dash dash tree, and you can limit the depth by doing level and specify how many levels down you want to go. Let's do two and press enter. All right, I wanna use this command as my default. I'm gonna open the CSHRC file like so, go to the bottom, and I'm gonna create an alias for ls, which is gonna be that command. That way I can keep using ls, which I'm really used to, but with the better functionality of EZA. I'm gonna save and quit, source CSHRC, and now if I do ls, it'll use the alias. Now that we have bat and EZA installed, we can set up some previews for when you're looking for things with FZF. I'm going to open the ZSHRC file again, like so, go to the bottom, and at the end of where I'm configuring FZF, I'm gonna add the following to set up previews with FZF. When I'm using control T, I'm gonna be using bat to preview the file and I'm limiting the file contents to 500 lines. Now I also want previews when I'm using the star star tab functionality like with CD. So you need to define this function called FCF comp run and use this switch statement to set up the previews. When I'm using CD, I'm gonna use EZA in tree format to see a preview of that directory. If I'm looking for environment variables with export or unset, I'm gonna show its value in the preview. And for the default, I'm gonna be using the bat preview. Now I'm going to save and quit, do source ZSHRC. And now if I do control T, if I look for a file here like DB client, you'll see that it uses bat for the preview with the color scheme that we configured. And you can scroll through the preview with your mouse. Remember that it's limited to 500 lines. You can also set up key maps to do that. If I do CD star star tab instead, it'll use EZA in tree format to show a preview of the directory. All right, the next useful tool is called TLDR. We're gonna install it by doing brew install TLRC, which is the Rust client for TLDR. TLDR is a huge collection of community maintained help pages for a bunch of different command line tools, which basically have user friendly summaries to give you a quick general idea on how to use a given tool as an alternative to traditional man pages. For example, let's say you wanna learn more about how to use EZA, you can use TLDR EZA and it'll give you a bunch of useful ways of using this tool. Of course, if you need to learn a lot more about the tool and all of the different options that are available, then you would just use regular man pages with man and EZA. Now the next tool is also really useful. It has an interesting name, it's called the f You can install it by using brew install the f and you can use this to auto-correct a command that you accidentally wrote the wrong way. So to enable it, we'll open up the ZSHRC file, go to the bottom, and then we'll add the following. This will set up the default alias, which is just f but you can also set up your own custom alias like FK or whatever else you wanna use for this. Let's save and quit. Then we can reload our config like so. Now I'm gonna use homebrew to install the next command line tool we're gonna to use. Let's say I type this wrong. So that's missing an E and I can do install. And the tool is called Zoxide and I press enter. That didn't work. So now I can type 
and press enter and it'll auto correct it. If you have more than one result, you can use the up and down arrow keys to choose the one you want. I'm gonna press enter to correct it and it'll automatically run it for me. Pretty cool. All right, so we just installed Zoxide, which is the next tool that I wanna show you guys. This is a better alternative to CD and it's really, really handy. With Zoxide, you can use Z instead of CD to move into a directory. To finish setting it up, let's open our ZSHRC file go to the bottom and then you'll want to add the following to set up Zoxide. Let's save and quit and let's source our config file. And now we can start using Z to navigate to different directories. When you do this, it'll remember the directories you've visited and make it a lot easier to go back to them in the future. I'm just gonna press enter to go back to our home directory and I'm gonna do Z and go back to where we were. I'm gonna do tilde slash dev slash YouTube slash spelt kit blog. So now I've visited this directory with Z. Again, go back to home and now I can do Z and just type out a string that matches with the last directory in the path that I want to go to. So I can type just spelt for example and press enter and it'll automatically go back to the directory spelt kit blog. And you can do this from anywhere. I have another directory called blog in the YouTube directory. Let's go up a level. All of the typical CD commands will work with Z and let's go to the blog directory. Then I'm gonna go back to home by doing Z and press enter. Now I can do Z and type blog and because there are two possible results I can do space and tab and it'll show me the different possible directories I can go to with FCF. Let's say I want to go to Svelkit blog and then I press enter and it'll take me to it. Before I finish, I wanna do some final configurations. I'm gonna open the ZSHRC file, go to the bottom. I'm gonna add an alias here for CD, and that's gonna be equal to Z. This is so that I can still keep using CD as I'm just really used to that. Now, the last thing I wanna do is to modify the theme for FZF. I'm gonna to go to where I start setting up all the stuff for FZF, and I'm going to add the following. Here I'm defining some different colors for my theme, and then for the FZF default ops, I'm adding the following to set up the colors. This particular theme goes well with my current alacrity setup. I'm going to save and quit, and then do source, CSHRC, and now I can use CD instead of Z. So I can do CD and spelt and press enter, and that'll take me back to my spelt kit blog. Now, if I do nvim star star tab, you'll see that it now uses the new theme. You can look for other themes online and there's an FCF theme generator where you can easily define your own theme. I'll have a link to the generator in the description. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm planning on doing a video on how I set up Alacrity, which is the terminal that I used in this video and I've been using recently. If you wanna stay up to date with any new videos I post on the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. And if you're interested in setting up NeoVim exactly like I have, I have a complete step-by-step -step guide where we take NeoVim from scratch and turn it into a pretty amazing editor for the terminal, then you can click on this video right here. See you guys in the next one. Peace.